Hey everyone, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and today I'm going to show you how you can paint in acrylic step-by-step step, this gorgeous scene of a wave crashing on jaggedy, awesome ocean rocks. Now, to help me do that is my husband, John. He's going to make sure that one of our cameras is pointing at, we have several cameras at several angles that is pointing at what I'm painting and demonstrating. That way you can see what's happening. You can see the colors that I'm mixing. You can see the techniques that I'm using. So as I'm talking about them and you're seeing them, you have a really good view into them. We will try to make sure that we've got some picture in picture up if you're painting along live. But remember, these references are often uh, available on Facebook, on the website, in the events, in different places. Um, and also, you will have them uh, after the show. Another thing to check in the description below is a link to the website. Uh, and there is a traceable, if you don't want to freehand this image and you're not feeling like that's where you're at in your art journey, those are provided for free and you can grab that anytime. And actually, this one has been up for a minute because I taught this in watercolor once already. Hmm. This is one of my very favorite paintings I've done this year in watercolor. Um, it was a really great frisky class. It was just a really great class. You can find that on the website as well. After the show, um, about mm, seven to ten days later, sometime sooner, we release a step-by-step -step written instruction of the class that matches the video called a mini book. And that is also time-stamped to the video. So after the video, we timestamp it and chapter mark it so it all matches up. That way you at home have all the resources that you could possibly have to be really successful in this painting. Because I know you want to do it. I know you love this image because I love this image. I saw it and I was like, I want to paint that splashy rock. And I figured you might want to paint it with me. Are you ready to go over the materials, Sir John? I am. Excellent. Or time. Or time. I like it when I'm small in, in the screen. To be really honest, um, this is my favorite. I like being a little tiny head in my painting screen. <laughs> It's a little thing that gives me joy. It may not impact you guys that much, but for me, it is life. <laughs> All right. I am on a 9 by 12 canvas today. I have some wishes and intentions on it. Um, we have a friend who is back in the hospital, so we're wanting uh, her to have really great results and uh, come out healthy and okay really soon. Um, uh, also, and this is, I'm not going to name the person, but this is just general and in general also, uh, for anyone who is in the middle of battling cancer, that you have the strength to kick cancer's butt and defeat it entirely. Mm -hmm. A cure for cancer, because I don't want any of you to have to go through that. Um, and then some personal goals for the channel. Uh, the colors today are, are you ready for the colors? These blues yes. look the same, but they are not the same blue. Ultramarine blue and phthalo blue. Phthalo green, cad yellow medium, cad red medium, burnt sienna, Mars black, titanium white. I'm also going to be using the splatter tool from my Art Sherpa splatter line. You, you'll notice it looks a bit like a toothbrush. And so if you can find a toothbrush that's just would rip the gums off your teeth, that might also work. But this actually is a specialty brush. <gasps> wow. Just it's vivid. Vivid. <laughs> I like the vivid. Remember wet cat pressure? <laughs> my vivid descriptions. So this is really fantastic for splatter, and I'm mean, going to be using fluid acrylic. You could use craft paint. If you struggle with splatter, I made a whole video on all the different ways you could splatter and how to troubleshoot that experience. So I totally get that. Um, and, of course, you can also do this very slowly one dot at a time. So I'm going to show you the cool, easy way of doing it. Dot, dot, dot. But it will be fine if you want to do it another way. Who is excited about painting an ocean? Oh, so many excited people here. I have to say, uh, feels good. I want to so, say hi to everybody on Facebook, everybody on YouTube. That is so good to have both of you here. So many emojis going on out here on, on, on YouTube. Thank you, all of our YouTube emoji, emoji people. I think, I think we're going to have to do an emoji vote soon. I think we've had some new signups. So we might get a new emoji. It brings color to my contextual life. It really helps put, it helps put tone to text, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> emojis. I'm always like with the team, use emojis. People need emojis. Put a happy face. Put stone to text. Okay. So right. my emoji strong opinions aside, are you guys ready for step one? All right. I can. Da, 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 da. All right. I'm going to use a tool called a T-square. And right. I'm going to come here. And I'm going to really come up to the upper end of my canvas. Um, this is a little bit less than the upper third. Right, it's right here, and I'll give you the exact measurement of the line. I'm gonna come across. I'm gonna use a watercolor pencil. 
this is my horizon line. Let's see how far down it is. It's just, I just did a little over two inches. You could do it like two and a quarter inches or so, two and a half, and you would probably be fine. All right. And I'm going to loosely sketch in where I feel that I have rock, right? Not all the way to the horizon line. I'm going to make a little kind of curved little rough line up here. A little jagged line there. Now, what's interesting about this is I don't actually need to really define the rocks at this stage. I'm going to come up and then a little line down. You right? don't define the rocks. The rocks define themselves. They really do. <laughs> right? Because, you know, we'll be doing stuff like this and then going to make sure that we've got nice little jaggedy rocks. You know, because they just sort of create space and I just need to know where I'm not painting blue water. Can you do a really good job of just like drawing those rocks? Like I really struggle with what line to draw the face, the rock. That's like, it's, it's, it's really. It is, right? It is the thing. So um, if I can put my iPad here, I can show you what lines I focus on. And it might help you if you're drawing along at home. Can you guys see this? Yeah. So this line and this line is important because it creates the space around where the background is. Now, later I'm going to be thinking about this line, this structural line. See these sort of contour structural lines? They're like really crazy roof lines or box lines. Huh. The triangular shape, I think about this triangular shape, but I don't need to say too much about it at this stage except at the bottom because I need to say where my water is going to go because there's, a low line of water that comes across at an angle, and then it jumps up, and there's another angle. So it's sort of a, a a lightning bolt. This is at an opposing angle to this. This one comes this way diagonally, but this one will come this way. And you don't need it flown in that big. And then come up. This is a bit down, but I know I've got a rock here, and I've got this shape here. So since I've got water here, splash here, and I'm going to be just dropping little other stones in as I go in my turn. I really just have to create space of this is brown rock stuff and this is water stuff. But those are the lines, the outside structural lines, right? There's lots of little detail lines. There's lots of little moments in a rock. But in your looking, there are these structural lines. Like this is an interesting detail, but the structure is the triangle, right? The structure is the slightly raised top line and a slightly angled line coming down. And the fact that, interestingly enough, these rocks almost make a straight line across. And you can really, you can print out the reference and kind of even trace over those outer edges. And believe it or not, that will help you see it. If you're at a place where you're struggling to see it, and that's not unusual because you're teaching your brain to do a new thing. If you're at a place where you're just struggling to see something, sometimes just going over it can help you. Right? You know, and then you can be like, oh, I got these sort of things going on. And then to realize also, no one's turning in your work. Like, no one's going to turn in your rocks. So your family and be like, did you see the reference? They did not follow the exact line. Mm. So in painting, on top of seeing what we see and trying to render it uh, with some accuracy, there's a lot of forgiveness in, in the sketching of it because it's your painting. I mean, you hear that a lot from people, and it seems like such a, a very mundane kind of regular, but not a little sentence, right? It's your painting. But it is, like, literally your painting. And that's as true for you as it is the most famous artist in the world. That's as true for you, your first painting, as it will be your thousandth painting. It is you and your canvas. We're taking the journey together, but in the end of the day, the, the destination that you get to is kind of sacredly yours. So. Your rock is just valid rock because you're valid. All, all rocks are works. valid rocks. All rocks are valid rocks. You guys see that? I see All right. That. Now, shall we? Rock on. Do step two. Oh, is it step or are you, are you all ready to take pictures? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, because we went into this whole like explaining it. I just want to make sure. a picture of it. <laughs> like I tend, to, I tend to ask questions which like sometimes push us off track a little bit. So I just want to make sure that we were like. Oh, no, that was a good. Okay. No, sometimes. And those are, I like to add, that's why I do a live art show, right? Is I'm answering questions. You guys want to know this stuff. 
What day is this? Is this Friday? <laughs> is this Friday? What day is this? I don't know. What day is this? <laughs> but that kind of stuff. And, you know, ask those questions because a lot of times um, stuff that seems complex actually has kind of a simple answer. Um, art uh, is, I'm just realizing how chipping nails are. Art is, <laughs> and I was like, whoa. Art is um, sensible, even though it's whimsical and imaginative. A lot of times the solutions that artists come up with to, you know, create a technique or to get a job accomplished are very sensible, sensible things that you, when you think about it, you're like, yeah, that makes, yeah, I would do that too. Like, it just makes total sense. Like, when you see them, like, lower water on the little small sculpture to make the big sculpture and you're like, oh, yeah, and it, it relates in size. You're like, it's clever, but it's also a very sensible answer for how to do scaling, right? There's just weird things in art. Camera obscura. Weird thing in art that made a lot of sense. Oh, wow. Hmm. So, Cinnamon, this hmm. is like a really good comment. Um, uh, so, do you, you dedicated a painting five years ago, Wishing Tree. Yes. Bella is now cancer-free July 13th next new week. will mark two years of being cancer-free. Thank you for all the support and love. We think about Bella all the time. That is such good news. Yeah, thank you. Oh my goodness! Oh my gosh, so many hugs! I'm okay. So many hugs! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Woo! Woo! That is brilliant news! Oh my gosh! Oh, I have to do this or I will look. You know there's that girl in school who does that beautiful cry? I'm not her. <laughs> I was never her. I'm the one that went full Blair Witch. <laughs> <laughs> so I gotta watch that because <laughs> my best girl be like down in a minute. People come by the live and be like, "This is a little bit weird." That is the best news. High five! Awesome yeah, thank you for sharing that with us. <sighs> thank you. So, like, where do you go from there? That's I don't like, know. That's <laughs> just amazing. <laughs> That's like some of the best news. And so, like, yeah, I can only. That imagine. is just the most amazing news. Oh, man. This, this so is just, the best Friday ever. So you're just standing there like a rock, and all of a sudden something hits you like a wave out of nowhere. But it's like a happy wave. That's it's a, a good, good wave. news like, wave. All right. I know we're doing a lesson, but that's, guys, that's, we've been on for seven years, and you know your community. You learn, you love your community. Uh, people matter to you deeply. And, like, you know their names and their stories. And when you get an update like that, yeah, it just, is an amazing feeling. I have no way uh, to express that experience. It's just yeah. incredible. It By the just... way, we're live. So Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you get to know how that feels. That feels there that go. good. And that's, for those of you really that good. have been yeah. there since Wishing Train, you know how good we're feeling right now. That's why we do it. That's how we do. I'm going to take Thalo Blue and Ultramarine Blue. And try to paint. Paint, and paint, paint on. Paint, paint, the, paint. The paint must go on. <laughs> Teach some people how to paint. And we're going to paint the sky a light version of that middle blue. Really, it's just kind of even. I want to come up above this uh, with a fairly level line. I'm a hot mess, you guys. I told you, Blair Witch all the way. Blair Witch. Okay. Except that I never bought that movie because, like, I was uh, in art school and I was taking uh, videography and I had to carry that exact pack that supposedly they walked off into the woods with. And I was like, there's no way you have enough batteries to do any of that. And also, you could beat anything to death with a camera battery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Old camera batteries <sighs> measured in minutes by the pound. Uh, yeah. It just. <laughs> it's like. If you were getting five minutes a pound out of your battery, you were doing really good. It was, yeah, it was just like, I disbelieve this, and, and then it turned out it wasn't true. But weirdly, the actress, the, the scene that she lied into, I was like, oh my gosh, that's me. That is me. That is totally me. I'm going to add a little more white and kind of lighten it up at the bottom. Nice sometimes to have a little bit of a, a lightness to the bottom of your sky if you can. You too? Do you need the tissue back, John? 
Oh, I'm okay. I have mute so nobody can hear me sniff. Oh, well, I hear you sniff. <laughs> but no one else does. <laughs> I can oh mute gosh, you. This you is a, a pitiful show. <laughs> but I can't. You guys know that is just the best. That is awesome news. And then it's. Uh, if if Bella's mom is still here, um, if you can email us at support at the art dot com, I would like to do something to celebrate that news. So if you email us at support at the art dot com, can you mute me? I gotta blow my nose. Okay, hold on just a second. I would appreciate uh, it. Do, do, do. Hold on, I will make you even go. Psh, oh, not you. Here you go. Disappear. You're not even up on the screen anymore. I made you. I made you completely disappear. That way it was it was better. You just let me know when you're all done. You tell it never be all done. See, this is the interesting thing about a green screen, but they don't tell you that, you know. Are you thinking all back now? No, nope, just still, she's, still she's still going. You're, you're there? Little Sherpa can come back. Hi. Hold on, you're not. There you go. Now you're fully back. <sighs> Moment's life is really wonderful. Uh. Oh, Mary Myers is also trying not to ugly cry at work. Yeah, you got to be in your cubicle. I'm with you, Mary. <laughs> I forget today's a, a Friday. It's Friday. We're at work. <laughs> All right. Now I'm going to want to kind of block in some of my ocean, and my ocean is going to be kind of a sea green. So for that color, I'm going to mix my phthalo green and my phthalo blue together, and that's going to give me a phthalo turquoise which is a really nice base for an ocean color. I'm using a half inch angle brush before I had a, I got so distracted, I forgot to say the brush, before I had a 26 bright ruby satin silver, and now I'm using a ruby three quarter inch angle. Um, just any, I guess it's three quarter inch. I'm just using an angle because it gives me a nice edge. Ooh, that's my, my stalker scam likely. Oh, scam likely is just like about me all the time. I mean, he used to like tell Scam Likely, it's never going to happen. Never going to get it, 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 never going to get it. All right. You have to wonder if, how many others out there just want to test every once in a while and answer, are you a scam? And <laughs> They're like, no, we're just selling insurance. And like, oh, they were right. <laughs> yeah, it's never wrong. <laughs> I used to answer speculatively, like maybe the machine didn't know. But now I'm like, no, it knows. You're, you're, you're playing. So I'm going to take this phthalo turquoise and I'm going to kind of pull it down to about here. And... Maybe right around here. Good question. Hmm. Terry was asking. So this is my first time on a live show here with Sam. Hi, Terry. Welcome to your first live. Uh, how do we ask questions or do we ask them through email? What's the right way of doing this? And so, well, oh, you want to answer that one? No. That's, oh. My job is to, I'm the ship's, I, I, I repeat what the computer tells me to tell you to tell you. That's a Galaxy Quest response, but okay. <laughs> Look, I, I, I live in the shadow of Sigourney Weaver. Y'all, we all live in the shadow of Sigourney Weaver. <laughs> I mean, she's like six four. What? I mean, I don't <laughs> even know, man. She was brilliant casting. But the, to your question, so during a live show, if you put your question all in caps, um, we try to answer uh, as many as we can during the live um, while still doing the lesson. If I miss your question, if you come by YouTube and and you leave a question. If you leave a question in the comments of YouTube, I check my YouTube questions every day. Um, old videos, new videos, I like. I check my little question tab every day. So I will try to get to it there. And if it's something that's super urgent and we miss it, then you can go into the Art Sherpa official group and ask the community, or you can write support at theartsherpa.com. So um, I have a lot of ways to answer questions. And the reason that I have a lot of ways to answer questions is that I'm an art teacher, and that's why I'm here. <laughs> that's what we invest a lot in trying to get your questions <laughs> so, to her. So we do put a lot of effort into getting the questions in. 
Notice that I'm just kind of getting this first layer in. I'm not even being that worried about brush stroke directionality at this stage. I might smooth that out a bit with a horizontal stroke, but it's not something that's too concerning to me. I'm going to come around the edge here on my camera. Oh, gosh, you guys are beautiful and amazing. Thank you so much for being you. Now I'm going to come down through here. It's a little bit of a different in tone. I can maybe get a little of my ultramarine blue here where I know I've got sea foam. Mm -hmm. And I'll paint that down through the rock. A little uh, ultramarine and white. I know I've got all sea foam here. I can get up into my green. I'm just going to kind of create it like a little blue space. I'll be putting the foam over. And if I want to grab a little white, even at this stage, look at this. I'm just putting a little rough thought of, hey, there's some splashy splash there. Mm -hmm. It's not too detailed at this stage. It just lets me know where that object would be. I'm going to rinse this out, get my towel. When I change colors, I like to wipe off my brush to make sure I'm not carrying too much water just in the brush generally. I'm going to get into more of the green. Down here, maybe a little ultramarine blue and a smidge, interestingly enough, of yellow to kind of give me the base of that below the wave green. That's kind of coming in front of the wave and around the rock. So it's just, and what that is, is a little sand churned up in here. There's just different little colors churned up. And we've just got to get the basis, this first sort of color value worked out that we like to put down here. Now I've noticed you've not been using your wet palette. Uh, okay, so that is completely that I have not taken the time to set it up. I've been just, I've been doing a lot of designing lately. and. Um, just kind of running, uh, trying to run out ideas, trying to, uh, I don't know, stay relevant and, um, and interesting in my art. So I've been trying to do a lot of designing. And I think I've not prioritized setting up my wet palette. And that's one of the things about a wet palette, though. It does require a little bit of main maintenance. It does require setup, and I have to, like, make the time to set it up. And then I get to the thing, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, I'm live. <laughs> I'm going to take a little of my phthalo green. And phthalo blue, and then don't get it set up. And that's uh, the reason why I bring that up is that is something to keep in mind that it's still good to keep palette paper around. Yeah, that way if I haven't soaked a sheet, because it takes about fifteen minutes for the sheet soak to work, mm -hmm. and I like to soak several of them at a time. And also, I like to do a cleanse on the thing. I have a whole weird way I do my wet palette make it work really really well all right it's so a I've procedure so it's a deeper kind of phthalo green up here and it goes a little more green up here this was the uh, phthalo green and phthalo blue mixed together this i added a little ultramarine and white to kind of come in and turn there and i may go ahead and and sort of do that through here a little bit just to talk about that there's a, a little splashy splash here I'm very loosely sketching that in, and it's going to be more narrow up here. I don't want to do the whole splash in. I'm just making sure my canvas is covered with some articulation about what it's covered with. I'm just doing a regular brush stroke here. Oh, thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the super chat. I do. I just had to buy canvases yesterday, so thank you for that. Mm -hmm. <sighs> All right, now I want to make sure that my upper horizon line is pretty level. So I'm going to come here and kind of clean that up where I feel like that got off. And I'm turning my canvas to get a better angle on my stroke line just to make sure I've got a fairly nice, decent level horizon line. I don't want to tip and pour my ocean out. Okay, there we go. Let's call that a step. Okay. A little bit of a step there that was chill and we loved and we got what we needed out of it. Woo -woo. All right. I'm going to sip my coffee. 
it was a good Starbucks day. We had to go run into town, and I got to get some Starbucks today, and so I'm feeling a little bit more like myself. I'm struggling to have my at-home coffee really work. And uh, what? <laughs> so John thinks what we need is a real bar espresso machine. <laughs> A 12-bar expression. Is that the one that they have at the Renaissance Festival? That was pretty. No, uh, bar refers to the amount of pressure oh, that okay. the steam head can generate when it's making Trust the... Trust my barista. I Yeah, so I just learned, like, there's... Baristas did everywhere. You're in my heart. <laughs> like, that's the thing we need, is we need pressure. <sighs> All right. Now, if... <laughs> we, do, we need more pressure for our hobby. In this, I'm going to go ahead and block in my um, rocks now. And by blocking in, what I mean is that I'm going to just do their basic values. I'm not going to paint their details. I'm not going to try to really articulate them completely. Let's use a Heidi Bright. This is a number 12 synthetic textura um, from the Raphael line for heavy body paint. You just want something that's nice and tiny and has a good edge and is firm enough to paint your paint. Any brush. You could be using the Art Sherpa brushes. I should have some of those in my bucket. Oh, I don't know where I put them. Oh, I do. You took out all of your extra... We took it to the um, retreat. So that people could play with them. So people could play with... They got to play with my actual brushes at the retreat. She was like... I'm going to take my cad red and my cad yellow and make a, kind of a nice little orange, and I'm going to mix some brown into it. And we're going to call this uh, maybe the light side of the rock. So if I had... A little bit of a rock that I wanted to paint, like this little guy's edge here that was in light. I could do it like that. Mm -hmm. And if I want to paint the top of this rock in light. And what I'm going to look for is, and I'm going to be doing this kind of very rough, and I'm going to use lots of angles. And the reason that I do that is these rocks do have angles. They are hewn in angles. And so it's important when you're trying to paint them, is to paint the lights and dark. So I'm going to come in the middle of my square and pull this down. So I've got a little light here, maybe along the edge that I can play with and come along this edge. Where I put the lights is where the rock is maybe jutting out and leaving a highlight. More details will come for sure. But at this stage, it's just nice to kind of roughly put in what you feel is going on. It helps you. Maybe a little more brown on this one. Rocks are so multicolored mm. that you will find that a lot of what you're doing is just trying to capture that. Just loving this day. Best day. Going to bring this, not all the way down because there's a watermark here on the rock. But I do want to kind of talk a little bit about maybe that light. This rock has another little light between them, so I can talk about that. Also, over here on the far rocks, this little one is right there, kind of got a highlight. And then it's friend up top. As a bit of a highlight. Now they have a little rock in the background, but it's not that highlighted. So as I move through, I'm going to get into my brown and maybe start to put a little black into my brown. And this is a very rough stage of the painting, guys. This is supposed to be rough. It's meant to be rough. Oh. So I'm going to say thank you to Ashley and hello again. Thank and you, Ashley. Also, A.A. Uh, a. Pruitt, Animal Anik Pruitt said, Cinnamon and John, have you tried the secret butter beer frappuccino yet? No. Mm. I has not tried secret butter beer frappuccino yet. We'll be but trying. I'm going to try it now. That's a thing. Shh, don't tell anyone else. Just anyone. the other it's couple hundred secrets. people that are here. <laughs> <laughs> don't let them know. Just us. Just does.
So you can see we're just kind of creating these little spaces. And again, I got a little highlight, 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 little highlights along the edge. And now I'm putting little shadows kind of down. And then I'll have another layer of shadow that goes a little deeper than this. And that just gives me a place to start building my rock from. Sometimes you just need a place to start building your rock. I've got the little dark rock out here and maybe even darker than that. I'm going to go a little darker. I've got that rock right there. I'm going to come in with some black. I'm going to come in from the side there. A little bit of dark on the side between these two, right? And even darker right here. I've got waves and stuff coming around it. I'm just, again, just grabbing planes. And then this guy has a little bit of a staining where the water hits, as does this one. So you want to capture that staining. And you can see it's a rough journey. I'm not being precious about it. You don't have to be precious about it. We're just going. You guys are good. You do not have to be precious about it. Creating those dark little shadows. You're just blocking in. Lots of detailing going into the rocks. You just need to know shape and a little bit of information about the lights and dark involved. There we go. I may also, you know, give myself a little rock here. It's a good place to have a rock. Could be a little, that's nice. Three is a good number. It gives you a nice composition of stuff to work around. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice, guys, it doesn't need to be anything more than this at this stage. Right. And this is an important thing to understand about your rocks. There's lots of time to get into the cracks and crevices and textures. But you've got to get just a sense of where are my highlights and where are my shadows? You can use the reference to help you anchor into that. You can use the step photograph to help you anchor into that. Um, you can like really like focus on this and just get this in and just try to remember that where the sunlight is hitting. And then when you're at the ocean or when you're looking at a beautiful Pinterest photograph of an ocean, remember to sort of sit there and look and go, where are, where's the sun hitting the rock and where's the shadows? Because that, that is, uh, um, the secret of your rocks. Secret of the secret rocks. of your rocks. Let's call this a step. All right. Let's call it a step. And then we're gonna get into the wave. And then we're gonna get into the waves, waves, waves. Waves, waves, waves. We're gonna get into the waves. Oh my goodness, how is everybody doing? I am excited to be here today. It is, you know. Uh, I want to thank Ann McQuellen for saying that, um, over on YouTube for that I do a good job of explaining how I paint. I'm really trying to, and listen, some artists are here on the platform because they're trying to grow their reputation, right? In, in the art world and build an art career and get collectors and, and it's, so that's their focus. Can we do um, that too? Huh? Can we do that too? No, we're not going to do that though. I want that. We're not doing that. Um, my whole reason for being in the, on, on, on YouTube and on Facebook and the different places is to teach you art. So if you need an explanation a different way or you need something to help you, if I can, do, I can't always give it, but if I can, I will because that's my purpose. That's true. We, that do, is, we really are pretty much here to teach stuff. And we should do um, a lot of that. Nikki that's Martin was wanting fun. to know if I could do a video about the Stay Wet palette, and I need to, Nikki. We do. I do. I do need to. I like super duper need to make that video because for real, I set it up weird. 
um, or or a little more involved than the instructor. Okay, in landscape painting, one way that you can break a landscape down into easier, more manageable parts is that you paint things that are the furthest back and then you come forward so that as you layer objects, things look solid or reasonable behind them. It's a nice way of doing it. And when you're really new to painting, what's great about it is, is it keeps you from getting overwhelmed in the process of it. Now, on the water, I like to have a little roughness. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a hog bristle brush. There are lots of hog bristle brushes um, out there. I would say you want one that, you know, kind of curves in and, you know, gives you somewhat of a point. This is a better one, like maybe for doing clouds. You've got to find one that gives you like, this one is good because it kind of comes into a point. They kind of more interlock these. So you're just looking for any version of that where the brush, even wet, is coming to a point. And that's what that interlock chunking means. But you can paint this also with just a regular round brush. If you don't have a hog right now, just use the round brush that you have. I'm going to come in and I'm going to mix my thalo turquoise that I like so much. So, so, so much. And I'm going to get some white involved. Like you do. I'm going to miss my stay wet palette. My not stay wet palette. <laughs> it's going to stay wet because I'm misting it. That's what I'm going to do. And we're going to create some little broken kind of ocean marks. See these little ocean marks? They are the way, what happens on water is the water is moving. It's got mm -hmm. current, it's got wind, it's got all kinds of things impacting its surface. And it's very rarely smooth and glassy. It's and true. So what you have is you have waves and those waves have shadows and highlights. And these ones are far, far away. So we have to come up with a way to create little paint marks that uh, remind us of that. And how we do that realistically is we try to get the same value. And we also try to get a good hue with this color, little tiny marks, two little furtive ones. And then we kind of create an implied texture that affects what we're seeing in the water pretty well. Hmm. Now, there's a bit of an active chop. So as I come forward, my wave marks may be more strong and at an angle instead of horizontal and far away. Oh, yeah. Right. So if I come here and there's a bit of a wave and I'm trying to speak to that bit of the wave, I might get a little phthalo blue and, and say, okay, here on the tip here, maybe there's the water is coming. A little bit up. It's not a crashing wave. It's not a high peak wave. It's a roll. That's what you're thinking of is the roll. Because mm. sometimes the ocean has a roll in it. And your role in the ocean is to take care of the water. <laughs> mm. Do you know what I find the ocean is often full of? Sharks. Sharks! <laughs> <laughs> and now we have drone footage to prove it. Sharks are good. Look, they were here first. They were really here <laughs> first. They, they've been we are the intruders. <laughs> they've been dropping teeth all over the ocean saying, this is mine. They really have. I'm, I'm likely, you leave your teeth floating about, it's your ocean. See how the light and the dark really help us kind of create the shape? You know, where it flattens out, it might actually get a bit lighter because more of the surface is exposed to light. I'm just talking about these things because sometimes if you understand why the highlight is here, it helps you realize when you paint it and what to look for. At least helps me. It's been something that helped me in my art journey as I've been painting. Chat is full of sharks. Oh, good. <laughs> Patty Hoffman, sweetie. I am sending love. And I see Karen is sharking it up. And Lula Hall. Yeah, actually, there's a game. in. You, if you're brand new here to the channel, or you're brand new to it, there's a game that if John talks about sharks, you put up shark emojis. It's kind of like the Rocky Horror Picture Show, but n not as awesome. But still fun. <laughs> <laughs> and there's sharks. And there's sharks. <laughs> but there's no fishnets. No. Although, there, there could, could be. be. 
That's why we're married. <laughs> the right here face, she says, one of those soundtracks that I could probably sing entirely from memory, and that is a rare thing for me. <laughs> Rocky Horror Picture Show changed my life. I think it changed a lot of people's lives. That's true. Come here and keep adding some blue and green. Nope. And then get a little more here. Like this is maybe a little more green in the coloring. And I might even a little yellow into it. Just a little more green in its effect. Have you done any pastel tutorials? I have not, but there has been a lot of requests for them. And I feel like maybe over on the watercolor channel, I'll do some. Hmm. Or maybe just on Facebook to see if anyone's interested. I like pastels. They are too much fun. I think that you would probably get a positive response based on the chat. I like pastels. Why don't we see about putting something up there? Let them I Don't mind. Experiment. Some like level one pastel land. Like, like do you guys want like pastels or you like want like one hoop pastels? Like three hoop pastels or one hoop pastels? Very different experience. Like sunset silhouette with two birds pastels or like. Crashing waves, pastel. I don't know. Yeah. Turtles, but I don't pastel. know either. Yeah, John did a beautiful turtle pastel. I used to love pastels. Mm. All right. I'm going to add some white. And some of the highlights to that part of the wave. So you can see we're just creating that, that distant sense of swell. Here's swell. Said the boat to the dock. <laughs> I'm tipping my brush with white. I go into the green, and I'm just trying to pull a nice little base of the swell. I, I kind of flatten out and straighten out these strokes and then curve it up into where, you know, you might be seeing that top in the top of the wave. And I know I've got a lot that's going to go disappear -y. Mm. Um And that's just because um, when we do the splashing, I can kind of maybe even bring some green into this and define this shape a bit. It doesn't hurt. It does not hurt you to do it. And just kind of shade that in there. It's really fun. I like painting water. Um, it's a bit like a Zen doodle. Once you start to see it, it kind of just pulls you in and lets you, lets you relax a little bit. Lets you find what is calm and centered in your soul. Mm. If you let it, if you're sitting here like berating yourself for every brushstroke, that would be counterproductive to your relaxing art journey. So if you're doing that, I want you to take a beat, <laughs> take a breath. And remember that being an artist isn't about being a perfect, perfect person. It's about enjoying making colorful marks on surfaces. Mm. That's it. Nothing deeper than that. Right. Hmm. Today, we do... Uh... Just really like the way the, the brush strokes. I just got you distracted. You were going to ask me a question, and you got distracted, didn't you? Well, no. I was actually thinking about the brush strokes that you were making there, and I wasn't sure if I should ask a question about them. Oh, or... please do ask a question. I'm fine. I'm good making them. So, th the directionality that you're putting in the brush strokes right now really starts to tell a story about the surface of the water out there. It does, doesn't it? it tells you how, where it's where it's heading. It tells you the story of where does that wave go. Because the wave is traveling somewhere. The wave is in motion. The wave mm -hmm. is alive and active and real. Mm. 
So finding a way to, you know, get involved in that is important. And just kind of add that little reflection here. And again, I know I'm going to have splash. Yeah. But I'm just shaping this up. That's what we're doing is we're just shaping that up. So it's sort of horizontal here. And then it kind of curves where it goes up the way. Right? That's what you're doing. I've got to do some over here. I got working on the right-hand side and sort of did not attend to my left-hand <laughs> side. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> you gotta go both ways you gotta take it everywhere so back into my green and blue my phthalo blue and my phthalo green and a little white and we'll now what's wonderful is guys there really is a lot of splash and chop over here so this isn't where you want to put this level of detail if you know you're covering the whole thing with just so much splatter, what you need to have is just a believable enough value mm -hmm. and carry through that it doesn't look like two paintings. Just enough. You know, you can get into the details if you just want to practice it and say, okay, well, since all of this is going to be covered up and I can't, you know, mess it up, then, you know, good for that, right? Yeah. Good for that. But, where am I at? I lost I myself. I lost where myself. I lost myself completely. You ever do that where you just lose yourself completely and you're I like, think I think that don't was know like an I am. 80s song. I lose myself completely without you. All right. So I'm just going to come here and I'm Sounds like a, a little bit of this white. Look at this. Look at us go. Flock of seagulls B, B side. Flock of seagulls B side. Are you guys liking the more lessons? Because we figured out how to do a few more lessons on the channel without doing it every day, like where you guys could keep up. Because um, when I go every day, I realize that gets to be a little unrelenting. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Oh, let's see here. I may have. I'm just going to come through here now. Okay, on, is there a trick? Space, I, oh. I missed a couple questions here. Oh, I would love to answer them all. Well, I'm is, painting this more green. Is there a trick to getting a straight horizon line freehand? Um, for me, okay, so here's the trick. Somewhere in your brush stroke, you are stronger and weaker, right? Where you have more control and you're, and you're steadier and in some directions or angles, you're weaker and you'll, you'll find that as you paint more. Um, if you are just really struggling to get a straight line, um, tape. Oh, let me back over here. That's a bad tip reading use, questions. But, like, you can come across here and you can tape it down and then this is a low tack tape this is wash tape but i tore it weird right you can measure out your straight line tape your straight line and then paint and then remove the tape and you'll get a straight line be sure you burnish well and that you, you use a low tack tape that is designed to not tear up your canvas this got hot and so the tack is all crazy mm. <clears throat> okay so while but, you're but so find the strength of your line. Mine is like downward, <laughs> like this. Mine is downward. Everyone has a different. Um, and if that is not enough, get the tape out. And create a resist or some type of now Katie's got a good one too. Oh, I'd love to hear Katie's. Okay. It says, Hello. So I have a question. I paint on mixed media paper instead of canvas. Oh, thirsty. Oh, that's to the point. I feel like the paint drives really quick, quick, really quickly. <laughs> How do I keep it from doing that? Do I just um, keep dipping the brush in water, or is there a better way? No. Um, so what you got to do is you got to seal the paper. Uh, so what's happening is the paper is a very thirsty surface, and it really pulls in the paint. Um, there, are, there's some really nice ways. Like you can take GAC 100, and you can do like two coats of GAC 100, which is GAC Golden Artist Colors. This company's. Uh, they used to, I, I don't know if they rebranded it, but it used to be called GAC 100. It's just their basic polymer, and you, and you paint it, and then you could do a white paint or a gesso paint to give yourself a surface. Um, the cheap and easy way that I do it is I just do three coats of whatever my underpainting color is mm. of acrylic and seal the paper with acrylic. Because at some point, have you noticed when you're painting on paper, it's like, it's, it's horrible, it's horrible, it's horrible, it's horrible, and then it gets easier and easier and easier, and then all of a sudden it's like almost decent. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening is the paper sealing and now the acrylic can do the acrylic techniques. But while the paper is 
uh, so thirsty, it's just gonna it's gonna pull the paint out of your brush and it's gonna dry everything out, and you're gonna be like, oh, I can't get a blend. And but you can do watercolor techniques with it, which is kind of fun, which you can't do on the canvas. There's there's ups and downs for each. I need to do a painting on paper with acrylic, don't I? I need to do that. Is this a real thing? Thank you. It's a good question. Hopefully, I get kind of a good answer in this moment. I'm I getting so. a little bit of my uh, blue and white here, and I'm going to just kind of paint some of that uh, more leveled out area in the way. Isn't that nice? Yeah. See that leveled out area in the way. I'm back into my slightly darker color to kind of speak about the way it bends up. Come to the edge of that. Really nice to do. So pretty. So lovely. Just blending it in here. And then back up into maybe some of the lighter color and then exaggerate that bit of wave back there. Go. Oh, I think we're doing pretty good, guys. This is looking great. This, I would say, is a step. It was involved. We did some stuff. And as you can see, this is lovely. Uh, when you get on a bigger canvas than this, this just looks better and better the larger it goes. It just, this stuff looks great big. This big is time intensive. I would do giant canvases, but we would never be done. As everyone who is doing Red Fox Girl Queen with me will tell you, it never ends. And it's hard to block time for big canvases. There, there's challenges to big canvases, but they do give you a lot of reward in their look and result. Can I get one of my watermelon lemonades out of the fridge? I don't know if I can, but just like at some point, you don't have to do it like you right totally now. You totally can if you explain what you just sprayed on the surface over there. You show them what you just did there? Um, On, on what? With your little psh, psh thing. Oh. So this is a micro mister. Um, facial misters, micro misters are misters that don't do heavy water drops, which overwet your palette. And it allows me to keep my paint on a regular peel paper palette wet enough to work through a longer painting session. And so I really, really like it. I also see a question. Um, I noticed that Cinnamon uses her favorite paintbrush with dark turquoise long handle. Can you please ask her what, what it is? Okay, so here's the deal with this brush. I really like this brush. Um, here, the issue is, the negative issue is, is that it's discontinued, <laughs> which is why I haven't been kind of chatting it up lately. Um, and it, and I've got to find another favorite, favorite hog brush right now. I would suggest that Simply Simmons, this line, Simply Simmons has got some pretty good hogs. Um, other, uh, the, the other brushes in, uh, in the silver line can be really good. I really like uh, some of these Raphael brushes are really great in their hogs. Um, what you want is the words chunking and interlocked. So chunking hog interlocked because what that means is really long, sturdy hairs that are curved in. And you want them to build the brush so that it curves in and doesn't flare out on you. You should be able to get a decent version of that in the um, six to uh, twelve dollar range. Sometimes, if you do simply Simmons, like three. Hopefully, that's helpful. I hope that's helpful. Oh, that's really good. I don't know if you guys have done this watermelon. Have you seen this? Okay, like this is not a sponsored thing. I don't know anybody at Bullhouse Farms. I know I'm not related to. There's nothing, nothing. YouTube algorithm, nothing. But I have to see nothing. But I just want to tell you at home that watermelon mint lemonade with a hint of mint has become like my summer obsession. I really love it. And even my mother-in-law likes it. She comes and she's like, do you mind if I have one? Is that okay? And I'm like, yes, it is. Because we're family and can have whatever we want. But I'm just saying she is also picky with a very refined palette and she likes it. And so if you like watermelon and lemonade and mint, this is like the thing. It's like an aqua fresca. It's just incredible. me happy in my soul okay more painting <laughs> i am going to now interestingly enough paint on some rock you guys ready for some rock mm -hmm. let's start with some rock 
And I may want to do some small brushes. I have some small angles here uh, and details. It's still a little sticky. I'm going to talk about Simply Simmons. Simply Simmons is a brush line I really also like, and it's very economical. So I like my red-handled Art Sherpa brushes. You can get those at Michael's. Um, and I like Simply Simmons. I like Raphael. There's a lot of brush lines that I like a lot because there's a lot of good brushes out there. What you want is just to understand what makes the brush good and get that. I'm going to get back into my rock colors, right? Which the basic rock color is a little bit of our yellow. And I'm going to tip it just at first with a bit of red. And then let's get our brown into it. And this will be kind of our, our very highlighted color. I'm going to come right here and maybe even a little more yellow. Get a yolk, the ochre out of it. I'm going to add some white. Again, this is just a little angle. And I'm going to kind of paint maybe a bit of a highlighted space. Right there at the edge. See that? Mm -hmm. There's going to be a weird amount to this. You're going to be like, what? I'm going to be like, I know, it's strange. I'm tapping. I'm using the corner of the brush. Can you guys see how I use the tip of the angle? I do. It's a weird thing. But I like it. I can always get more uh, brown into a mix. And I may kind of come through here and I'm making little highlight marks. Maybe a little brown and white. It's fun stuff. Another nice rock color that we're going to get into is our ultramarine blue and our burnt sienna. And they're going to make a gray. This is very nice for shadows. Very nice for shadows. And you can see I get a little white into it and I get a nice kind of gray color. I like to use this where the rock is maybe a little in shadow. But still has some perhaps light reflecting on it. I can always come back with lots and lots of black and brown. So I'm never ever really trapped. And you can see the rock just starts to be a thing. Paint, you want to paint your rocks as if they are like the water and that they have personality. The rocks have a lot of personality. All rocks have a lot of personality. Do you remember the rocks and the rock falls on pink heart, uh, on acrylic April? Mm -hmm. Rocks have a lot of personality. I'm adding some shadows and, and, and more drama there. And then back into the blue and burnt sienna right here comes forward. So it's just got a bit of dimensionality. Just keep those brush strokes rough and considered. A little of my white into that. If I need a little more brown, I'll get it. I'm 
I like to add highlights. Define those highlights along the space. So we're just building up that big structure of rock. Using rock. And you can do that. Let's get a little of our brown and black again. Again, I'm just using an angle brush. I like angle brushes because they have lots of edges and sharp bits that I can exploit. And we want to exploit our brushes if we can. I'm adding a little bit of a more considered shadow through here. I'll come back and lighten it up, but this will help me maybe get those highlights to really pop, pop, pop. Yeah, I'm going to paint it out. I have to put it back in, so be prepared for that if that happens. There we go. I'm going to get into my orange and brown color that I mixed earlier, which was the cad yellow, cad red, and a little burnt sienna. Mm -hmm. This is still pretty wet, so it's going to blend into this. It's going to let me kind of exploit some different little highlights. We're going to exploit those highlights. Lots to do. So I want to get more into the brown. I always come over and grab a bit of a highlight right there. Come back there. So we're just building out that rock, aren't we? Mm -hmm. It's fun to build the rock. You can always come back with some very dark color. And even through adding shadows, create quite a lot of dimensionality. Another interesting thing that you can get into is there's a bit of a green brown going on that you can play with. Big art high five to all the new people joining us today. Welcome. Grab your brushes. We're having a blast. You don't actually have to paint. You can watch and decide if you like the lesson. <laughs> it's okay. But you should. It's super fun. It is super fun. I'm going to take again that yellow and a little brown. Some green got in that. But with rock, sometimes you just kind of enjoy the happy moments where stuff gets weird. Hmm. So when you're not painting live, what do you do when you're painting? When I'm not painting live? You're not painting live in front of hundreds of people without a net, with all the pressure of all these people asking you questions while you're doing what do you what do you like to do to like just relax and unplug and paint? Um <laughs> remember those times. I don't remember relaxing. And I'm do, you listen, do you listen to music when you paint? What do you I do? do. I tend to listen to books on tape. Um, I'm right now listening to Nora Roberts I um, because my favorite art, uh, authors are, they don't have anything out right now. So I'm learning. Um, maybe Nora will become one of my favorite authors. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm listening to some Nora Roberts. Uh, sometimes music, sometimes a YouTube video in the background perhaps. Um, I find that when I'm not painting for you guys that I change my mind a lot more in a painting. <laughs> Whereas, like, here, like, if I hated something and I wanted to just paint it out, I wouldn't do that during a live show because that would just break your souls. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that, and that would just be mean. But, like, when it's just me, if I'm like, man, nah, I don't want to rock, I would just paint it out. And just <laughs> halfway through the paintings and decides, no, nah, I don't like this rock. It just paints it out. And you guys are like, but I just got the rock perfect. Exactly. And so I never, ever do that. But, like, in my own painting, and so sometimes that's a little weird because I'll be like, 
the painting took me two hours, but really it's like a 30 minute painting. And that's just because I was just goofing around. Mm. I'm adding a little highlight and I'm going on the edge here to make those rough. Can you see I'm making those rough marks? Oh, I like that little rock. It's just getting there. Uh, Brenda asks if I do any crafts besides painting. Well, I'll tell you what has happened to me. Uh, children. <laughs> children happened to me. So my <laughs> youngest uh, likes uh, squishy repainting videos. And she's got some YouTubers that she follows that she thinks are superstars. And they are superstars. Because, like, they have a zillion subscribers. Like, I went into the wrong art form. I didn't know this until I started watching squishy videos. And so, like, oh, they're all, like, 15 million views. And I'm like, oh, I guess I should be painting squishies. Anyways, I'm not really going to do that. But she's like, let's paint it. And I'm like, well, I, I know a lot about art. And she's like, yeah, but you have to do what they say. I'm like, you know, your mom knows a lot about art, pumpkin. I'm like, I think I can handle painting a squishy. A squishy. And I'm like, and we have, we, and she was like, we have to buy all this stuff. And I'm like, we don't have to buy any stuff. I have an art store's worth of art supplies. You've just seen the studio, you know. And she's like, okay, but I don't think it'll work. And so we pull out all my amazing art supplies and we did go to do this. And, and long story short, three hours later is I can definitively tell you, you cannot use soft body paint to paint a squishy. <laughs> definitively i've now had to watch a bunch of craft videos and buy a bunch of art materials which my daughter told me in the first place i was going to have to do <laughs> when your eight-year-old tells you what you need to know <laughs> so, i am now upcycling and repainting squishies and i will post uh the next stage of the journey i probably should have recorded i like i didn't even think to record it because sometimes i just get into my own life if that mm -hmm. makes sense but I will at least post a picture of what we do next time. I'm just adding some rough lines to help create that sense of rock in there. I'm going to go into some orange, which might be lovely. I like to put... Uh, color into the space. Hello from Hello. Fresno, California. Fresno? Fresno. I know where Fresno I is. I thought you might know where that was. I know where Fresno is. I know all about Fresno. Just because I, I grew up in California. So. That's why. <laughs> There's no Fresno shade. Don't <laughs> I just know where you are. <laughs> We're going to come in and kind of hit the front highlight of this. And that's the yellow and red and a little bit of brown. And we're going to just hit the front highlight. Maybe a little more of my brown paint here. And... Some green and brown we mixed earlier. Get some interesting rock, right? Mm. We don't want any boring rock. We want nice, interesting shapes and colors to your rocks that yes. you're going to splash so that they're as fascinating, I would say, as what's around them. Let's get some black. Make sure this nice little shadow in here is very shady. I think it's also nice to put some little shadows in the front face. Now we're done. Mm -hmm. Little shadows on the front face. I'm going to grab a little bit of my white and black and just add it into my other rock mixture. And add some highlights there. Jennifer's like, what are squishies? Oh, gosh, they are a slow-rise shape foam toy. I'm sure they are not good for the environment. 
they're the you know those those things you would they're made of foam and they give them away and you kind of squeeze them and after you squeeze them about a hundred times they start to crack and break down because they're made of this like foamy stuff. Yeah, that's a squishy. Let's call this a step and then we'll do the second bits of the rock this way because it's a lot. Take bits it. of rock. More bits of rock as okay. we go forward because this, this this painting is a lot about rocks and we have bits so much of rock. to say about rocks. That's that the greatest collection of like yeah. '90s music. Bits of so, rock. Yeah, I'll do a squishy, and, and who knows? Maybe I'll do a video about, like, what every parent needs to know before you paint a squishy, like, don't use your soft body paint. I think I probably could have used my GAC 900, my GAC 900, which is a uh, medium that modifies acrylic paint for fabric painting, because I believe the issue was both binding and flexibility. I think the issue for the binding is my daughter said we didn't need to sand the squishy because it felt rough, but I think we did need to sand the squishy. And then the other thing, like with the light, jewelry level of sandpaper and then I think if I had added GAC 900 to my paint it would have had the flexibility but I just broke down and bought the tulip because I was like I like tulip paint as a company um, I think tulip is really cool that I love to create people are just really cool and so I always feel okay about giving them my money and, and I have a whole story about why I know they're awesome because hmm. they did something so amazing to the like like I, I, you know, when you get let go from a brand deal, I can tell you that you are not always treated very well. But when um, the Crafty Chica left, I love to create. They wrote a, they put a bunch, they put a glitter in a gallon jug and put notes to her about like what it was like to work with her and treated her amazing, so she, she could feel good about going and doing her book career. And I can tell you that that is not common in the industry. And I can say it really impressed me. So I feel okay buying their stuff. I don't know anybody over there, but I know that story, and that's why. And also, they make a good product. Okay. So we're going to continue painting forward. More rocks. Same deal. <laughs> same, same. A little brown and yellow. And let's start to speak to this rock. That rock. This rock right here, which is a pretty rough little rock, I'll tell you. I'll grab a little more yellow and come to the top edge of this. And a little white in there. And I come forward, create a little highlight. I also think a little highlight along this uh, little rocky edge here. I'm just putting it in. A little bit at the top of that rocky edge. Because you need a little highlight at the rocky edge. Maybe let's get a little brown and ultramarine blue together. Because they're great dark color that is not black, and that lets you reserve black for some other dramatic moments. And also, if you remember, black and, and yellow make a fantastic rock green as well. It's always nice to reserve that out, isn't it? Mm hmm Add some bright brown here, kind of spot through. Love doing that. Fun for me. A little white into the gray mixture that's over there. And see, just love getting this little moment going. And a lot of times I'm dry brushing because the roughness of the mark really adds to what we've got going on. I'm going to come here and and maybe speak to a bit of a shadow. And then let's make sure that there's one here as well. Probably didn't need to take it down that far. Add some black up for what we know is happening with the water. Now, on the far side, I'm going to take my rock mixture of yellow, red, and brown 
can paint maybe a little bit of a highlight to somebody that could be right here. And then I can always come into this mixture. I'm going to go the brown and blue and a little bit of white and get a light gray. And show that far side mm -hmm. with a little bit of that edge there. A little bit of yellow. And let's keep coming forward in our rock shape of interesting browns. A little more brown into it. Mm. And again, we haven't even pulled out our, our black and yellow, which gives us that great green rock color. Which we should probably pull in too. I'm having a lot of fun here, like you do. I do. It's just the rocks are fun. Nothing wrong with having fun while you're painting. You know, it just is. I'm adding a bit of white. I'm just brushing that out. The layers are are very busy, and I like them. Ooh, this is a very interesting one of those questions because mm. it implies some things that I'm not sure. I'll ask. Okay. So Brenda wants to know, have you ever gone back to basics and only painted with primary colors? <laughs> he is only doing this because this was literally just a big discussion that we had about uh, why there weren't more primary lessons on the channel. And I was like, because primaries as a core color set are harder to teach and harder for students to learn initially because you don't just have a brown, you have to be able to mix a brown, you have to learn all this really hardcore color theory. And we were just talking about, would it be better to go to a basics course that starts from that core knowledge or to give students a palette that would work across all tutorials? And then I was like, well, we only have this number. We have something like 12 or so lessons, maybe 15, 20 about primary colors. But uh, yeah, it's an interesting thing because it seems like it would be easier, but actually it's more challenging. Working with only primaries is actually a more advanced skill than working with just pigments because you can predictably go get CAD red. Whereas making CAD red with primaries is very difficult to do. Or it ultramarine blue really, or Taylor yeah, blue. You're or, not ever going to get to a CAD red, but a bright red orange with just primaries um, is very difficult to do because you have to start with magenta. You can't start with like a red red and yeah, and then so it's like, you know, your primaries are never really primary. I'm using black and yellow to make those green colors that we talked about earlier that were so present on these rocks. And I think that they're really fun to get into. You can also add some white into that to play that up. See how that just definitely takes it right into that green yellow space. I'm going to get some more white out there. So it's, it's awesome, but it's also a challenge. And to be honest, I think that being online for seven years has, has helped me teach better or know what you guys maybe, maybe did or maybe didn't. You guys are the ones who get to say that. But I feel like I understand better what students need um, in the beginning spaces. Add a little more black to that mix. I'm going to come from here and... And this is black and yellow. Black and yellow make a green. Uh, and they're really wonderful to know that you can get that with them. 
You see, that just pulls that rock more into that ocean mm -hmm. space. Where you need that grain. Maybe a little more black here. And so that's kind of fun to come into that black and yellow. But yeah, no, primary is like, and I'm always torn because I think that starting from primaries is so good for students, but I understand like the initial frustration of figuring out how to get to everywhere in the colors. And I think, you know, I'm just at a place now where I could even begin to, I think, guide students through that space. Mm-hmm. Like, to know what a beginner would need to know to get to a brown from a set of primaries reliably. I'm adding a little bit of highlight to, to these, like, kind of distant in the flashing rocks. Maybe a little more yellow and white into that right here, I think, is what I'm thinking. Just adding more dimensionality, right? Mm -hmm. What you're always doing is coming in and finding more space. Like teaching 30 paintings on water and landscape to beginners, not only do you guys learn a lot, but I learn a lot about how you learn. Mm -hmm. Okay. You seeing how we're finding these highlights and these shadows in this space? You seeing how this comes together and pulls that in? I do see. Yeah, that's where we're going. I'm going to take a little bit of my ultramarine blue and my black together. And I'm going to come here. Maybe a little ultramarine blue uh, and brown. Just finding that space, that moment. I'm going to come along here with a like darker color because we remember we have that uh, staining of the waterline. Brown and yellow. And a little white. Got a little bit of a shadow or cracking in the rock. It's always nice. I'll come here into my white, create kind of a highlight, and let's come along and highlight some of that edge along the water there, right? But also into the rock. So 
It's got face. You're just going to paint until the stones rise forth from the sea or until you're happy with it. I'm coming along here with a little blue gray, which is my ultramarine blue. My burnt sienna and my white. Pull that in. You never knew rocks were such a colorful thing to paint. Mm -hmm. And back into the blue gray again. A little distant highlight there. Not too much of a highlight, so go into my blue. More into the white up here. And you're painting kind of like these little wet highlights that are on the rock. Mm -hmm. like that. That's the brown and the blue and white. It's not white, white, but it does convey the highlight that you might see on wet stones. In the sunlight and that's what we're putting out because you would have some highlights of moisture from the water on the stones in the sunlight Painting these is so satisfying. Mm. <sighs> We're just getting there, aren't we? Yes, we are. It's looking really good. Adding a little blue kind of down at the bottom. That's that's the ticket. I'm getting back into my black and yellow. And come here and we're going to start to paint these far off little rocks. A little bit of the gray going. Mm -hmm. And back into the black. some deep value between these two so they can be separate rocks. I'm thinking about that. That can dry for a second. And then let's come and work on, and I can even switch to an Archer by number four bright. It'll give me nice edges. Sometimes all you want in life is nice edges, right? Mm -hmm. back into my black and yellow mixture to get kind of the gray green a 
It's just fun to play with it. Highlight here. Mm -hmm. So hopefully what you're seeing is that these stones have like these little highlights where the sun catches them and then shadows where they, um, you know, maybe have a crack or the light is behind them, backlighting them so that it's always just, I'm using the corner of my brush. I don't always change brushes because you have to change. Sometimes I change brushes so you understand you don't need to have a special brush. Right. right? Because very, it's, sometimes you need a special brush, but that's rarer than you think. Come here and get maybe more into my brown. Rinse out a bit. Get into my black and blue. Shadow behind that highlight, I think. My shadow there going forward. You can always get a little white into something. Be thinking about it. If I need to knock back a highlight, I can. It's there, but it's maybe not as bright. Mm -hmm. Too bright for positioning in the painting. And that can happen. Sometimes things are just too bright for their positioning in the painting. I haven't rinsed out my brush. I'm just taking my uh, yellow and red. And then based on how dirty the brush is, a lot of times I can get to a great color just because right. we're there. Adding some water so I'm pretty slow. Pushing some of that forward. Mm -hmm. Fun to do. Altering blue and burnt sienna. Such a good gray. Putting that around, finding all the little dimensionality. I did rinse out on that one. I'm doing brown and yellow here, Got just a smidge of white. I like to carry those colors through so that even as I'm moving the water around the rocks, mm -hmm. um, they still feel like they've got uh, lots in common with their large size counterparts. 
that's the big thing is how do you keep it how do you keep the little rocks in the swell um, grounded to what's going on in the big rock space and a lot of times that's just carrying that color through I feel like we've got some very nice rocks starting to think about being in our in our space I mean I honestly feel like you could just do oh gosh just so many um, hours and hours of rock mm-hmm. John's like are we today are we doing hours and hours of rock I'm adding like a nice little planer highlight and a dry brush to this And again there, just giving some shape and form to it. That's the green and yellow. It's the green from the yellow and black with a little bit of white. You can always get more white into it if you need a. And a brighter highlight for it. Adding a little bit of a brighter highlight there. The nice thing about the Art Sherpa brushes, and you can get these at Michael's while supplies last online, is that the edge on them is incredibly sharp. It's like the sharpest out there. So if you need a sharp edge that doesn't go away, that's what that is. But I never want you to feel like I use a lot of different things because I never want you to feel like you have to use what I'm using. Um, Because you do not. and pop a little highlight down the front of that rock. Maybe something there. Maybe a little bit there. I think we are almost at a step, babe. I think we're there. I think I'm I'm willing to let it go. <laughs> I'm willing to do the Elsa and let it go. <laughs> I feel pretty happy with that. I really love this watercolor. We kind of put this kind of energy and effort into the rocks on the watercolor. So I'm very excited to be doing this in the acrylic. I know it's a bit more of a deep dive, but I feel like completely worth it. Now, I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but Altamarine kind of tends to dry out fast. Um, and almost every color line for me, so I often have to re-put it out. Um, so you may see me putting uh, paint out. I'm in a lightly mist. Um, you'll see me putting paint out to just imp- like improve the flow and everything of the paint. <sighs> Guys, we are doing good. Ah, breathe in the good creativity. This is going to be fun. So we're going to now do the front churn. All right. This is the uh, front of the, um, I'm looking for a brush that I just put down, but I don't know where I put it down. I'm so weird. I put down brushes and like I fully lost a whole brush. (laughs) I mean, I'll find another one that'll do the job, but I just fully lost the whole brush. brush. I think I lost the Cambridge. I put put it down and I think I might have, it doesn't matter. Because I have other I have other hogs and I always make that point. No, it was dirty, so I wouldn't have put it back in the bucket, I don't think. It is. But, oh, I guess I did. Never mind. I put it back in the bucket. Yes, more more watermelon. Yay. I love it. So good. You're such a good stunt hand. He named himself that. I did not name him that. Or did they name you that? Who named you stunt hands? I don't know. How did that happen? Does anybody remember? Been a minute. I think all it right. was at some point I said these these hands do all their own stunts. Oh, so you started it. So I'm gonna get into my know. green. Now the green up here, I'm actually maybe, maybe gonna use a, a little more. You were more. like, I need some stunt hands to come do this. Gee, something happened. Something weird happened and it that's happened a, and it was going on. That's lore I don't even know. Lore none of us know. So the front here in the sea foam is a greener, lighter kind of sea foam green. No, no, no pun intended. And thank you for all the stars. Thank you for the stars. I really appreciate it. So much like back here in the waves, we've got to start to paint what we've got up here. I may put out a little more white closer to where I'm mixing my sea foam. 
green colors. Because the reason that we do uh, the front and the back and everything before we do the splash is because that ends up overlaying everything. Mm -hmm. Just in, in its very nature is it just wants to be over everything. I do want the front mix to be much more, much more um, green than behind. And I am going to use a more horizontal and short stroke, though I will sometimes, you know, move something because the foam would have moved it around rocks and things. So that's what the stroke is. I'm just using a brush. It's going to give me a nice kind of soft, soft edge as I brush it through. I need to get into my brown. I will. That front beach water is, it's still a beach color, but it's, it's just, you know, the sand's gotten in it, the churn, there's other things kind of clouding the color, I think. Is what we're always seeing. And I love the uh, ultramarine and the green. They make kind of a teal. Mm -hmm. It's just a little different than the phthalos do together. And I feel it lends itself to this really well. That green gold. And I'm just creating some depth. And interestingly enough, value and highlights in the color. You can see I'm just sort of softening this and I'm working this through. You could probably do this with uh, one of the dome blenders or uh, just any brush that gives you a nice blend. That's what you're kind of looking for in this space is, is a nice blend. Now in the rocks over here, I kind of expect it to be more in the ultramarine. So I'm going to bring that over here because it's in shadow. Where we know we're going to see it in shadow. I definitely expect that to be a cooler color. And then even coming kind of forward in the water. I'll pull some of the rock color in with a little bit of green. Because the reflection shadow from that rock would definitely be impacted in that water there. We would see it. Mm -hmm. Back into the green and blue and a little bit of yellow and sometimes white. Now it's nice to kind of be like giving some value. This isn't the sea foam color by any means. This is more what we we're seeing in the chop and churn of the water. We definitely want to paint that kind of value and you know, effect in, like maybe here near the rocks, I might get a little more white and yellow. A little more white and yellow near the rocks, and then I'm going to take the brush, kind of damp and smooth that out. I can always go into the ultramarine and the phthalo green and kind of talk a bit about maybe some of the areas that have a darker value because mm -hmm. they'll be here where they have highlights. Let's go. We're just having a wonderful day. Look at us go. Mm -hmm. Always add a little kind of shadow if you can. Um, around objects like rocks and the depth of waves, it's because, you know, if, it's, if the wave is curling up, right, it's going to have a bit of a shadow in it. 
I and bet. I am going to where I know that I'm going to be bringing the chop down. I may add some of that shadow along that. I can do it after chop is in, but sometimes it's nice to catch it early. It can be nice. It can be nice. Wouldn't it be nice if we were water? It's such a weird show. I'm so lucky to still be online. Uh, see how we're just adding a little bit of that? Yeah. Darker color right there, brushing that. Oh, it's just boom, 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 boom. It really boom. is. Now, let's call it that. I know that was a kind of short step compared to some of the other steps that we've done. Mm -hmm. But we're going to come back and we're going to um, uh, think about, like, putting in the chop. And then maybe we'll pull all the foam in. Actually, I might put this foam in now and then chop and then more foam. And Oh, yeah. Sorry. I'm supposed to hand it to them together. Is what it's supposed to be. I should be handing it to him together, but sometimes. Um, yeah. uh, are we going to be doing the cancer crab known uh, for us? Uh, so for the astronomes, many of you guys have questions about the astronomes. I'm a little behind on the astronomes. Um, YouTube has been a little bit of a challenge lately. Uh, and so in response to that, we have some like really great kind of mainstream classes that are up. But yes, I am finishing the astronomes. That is a passion project for me. Um, so all of them will be complete. I'm a little bit behind. I do expect to be completely caught up in August. Um, the other thing is like the retreat. So like I'm just trying to make sure that everything is there and the patients are taken care of and everything's going on. So I'm like for work-life balance, I am going to kind of just give myself that space to know, all right, by the end of August, I want to be completely caught up to the current month on my astronomes. Uh, the Geminis are designed and will be painted, and I am working through the designs. I have kind of a direction I want to go with the Cancers, you know, because it's Cancer. And then also as, as gnomes, just generally, I have weird feelings like on how I want to paint the gnomes. So um, that's what's happening with the astronomes. Uh, but I have done everything. I have done the Capricorn. Uh, I've done Aries. I've I've done everything uh, up until uh, March. I think June, March, June. Yeah, or no, maybe June. I've done everything up until June. You've done a few. I've done a few. It's it, you know I I don't remember the order that they all go in. I'm not like that. I'm like not that on point with my. Um, signs and stuff, but I, uh, through June. That's where I'm at. And all, all of them will be done, um, for sure. Now I'm taking my little sea foam color, my sea green color, and I'm adding it to my white and creating kind of a, a sea foamy little off white color. And on the toe of my brush, and I'm very light with my pressure, I'm going to kind of talk about the patterning of the sea foam out into, in the front portion before the wave. And this is going to be kind of uh, an interesting challenge uh, for everyone in their brush pressure. Um, letting some of the canvas show through, paying attention to the directionality of your brushes and how flow happens and how we can paint foam that looks like foam. So that's what we're doing. See, we're painting foam that looks like foam. Everyone's while well, might need a little more water on my brush, and I may even switch to a smaller brush to do this. Yeah, I think I might. Just to make my life easier. Generally, I like to paint the biggest brush I can for something. This is a small little uh, hog brush. Um, it's also in the Raphael line of brushes. It's got a very nice tidy head, so I like it. Get into my sea foam. And it is smaller, so I can do more fussy bits of foam, which we have some very fussy bits of foam we want to do. This is one from the retreat, so... It's also good. I'm like, I'm practicing with it. 
you can paint pretty well with almost any brush as long as you practice with it and you try to make sure you get familiar with it. That's the trick is you've got to get to know all your tools. Everybody gets, needs to know their tools. We all do. So sometimes we have heavier. Love I love foam. all that little data. Sea lace. Sea lacing. Sea lacing is a good, fun thing to do. It's really about just uh, recognizing that this is a uh, got to feel pretty random. Much like clouds, this is an exercise in random. Mm -hmm. I can get some really great effects by wiggling my brush back and forth. I'm keeping it on the toe. It's really good to let some canvas show through. I also want to kind of avoid uh, making uh, repeated patterns that are uh, start to become a plaid rather than a lace. You know, you don't want to make something that's like not uh, reflective of the type of natural element that you're painting. You know, so jumping around and having some randomness can be good. I like to lift and, uh, and it's a very subtle thing where the brush kind of lifts and then drops into the canvas. So sometimes it's more connected than other times. You can kind of push up if you want to imply that something is splashed up. It's a nice little technique and brush that you can do. Little bits of sea foam sort of coming forward. So a little bit behind the rock. Just a little bit back there. You can always come through with like a nice darker color. This is a little more in shadow. So fun to paint foam, isn't it? Mm hmm. It's okay to have areas where it's maybe a little more solid. It's okay to have it come on, on and off the page. So I think if you can get it to just there, you're at a good place to move on to the next step. Ooh. Step, next that was step. so Yay, yay. Next step. Steppy, steppy, steps. 
Oh, we're, I'm surprised. Like, I thought this was going to have 25 steps. We had a long step. <laughs> Big, long rock step. Rock lobster? Rock, rock lobster, maybe? I don't know. Um, so what colors um, am I using for sea foam? So the sea foam is actually this mixture here that we did, which is the phthalo green, the ultramarine blue, cad yellow, sometimes toned with a little burnt sienna. And I've just so I had that mix there, and I just took that off kind of oceany green and added a lot of white to it. And that works. And this is like, look, if your ocean had a blue or a purple cast to it, you would want to take this front mix where you had a lot of sea foam and then just lighten it a lot um, to create that highlight and froth. And that way they would seem like they were uh, congruent to each other. You wouldn't want to have a whole different color froth, generally, unless you were doing a fantasy piece. But you could if mm -hmm. you were doing a fantasy piece. But that's generally what, what is that. And then Annie Oakley wants to know, what varnish do I need for an acrylic painting that I have outside of my house? So here is my honest opinion on this. This is an ever-changing answer. You need a varnish that is specifically designed for outdoor use. And that varnish is uh, more resilient to weather, but also light. My two cents is, is that um, there are two places you would get that information. Companies that specialize in uh, materials for mural artists, because mural artists are doing artwork outdoors and they need materials that are outdoor resilient. So if you have that in your area and you can go talk to them there and look at those products. Uh, I know we did, an, we did, I did an outdoor piece and we found an amazing hot varnish um, that was designed for outdoor use and it absolutely held up in hurricane weather in Houston. Um, but it, they, they do require more caution and more awareness. Um, so you can go to a mural store or you can write Golden Artist Colors, their customer service department, and they can let you know what maybe other products or other things that you could do to prep uh, your artwork for the outside because they have a lot of specialty stuff and they will sometimes advise you on things even outside their product line because they're kind of cool like that. So those are the two resources I would do. I don't remember the name of the varnish that we use though for our outdoor project, but I remember we got it from a mural resource. And that's, then that's how we found it was we went to a mural because everyone else until then was like, you could use cement varnish. You could, they gave me like crazy things that would have pulled the paint off the product. So um, it's definitely a good idea to take that extra time and uh, find those specialty products that are made for that, not just hit it with a cement sealer. Hmm. So some people do. Let's paint some sea foam, right? So we've got this nice background of like, foam we've got to do and I'm gonna again use a rough brush this is the Paris Clacket classic kind of like little hog I'm gonna get it a bit wet and I'm gonna kind of pull in maybe some of my altering blue and some burnt sienna I need enough water for it to leave my brush but not so much that um, it's sopping wet. You can also do what I'm about to do with a sea sponge pretty effectively. I'm going to just, uh, or a stencil brush. If you have a good one that will give you a good stencil. I'm going to tap up and down this kind of deeper blue color. I'm doing this uh, shadow of color because see, uh, a wave is actually, a lot of that splash is in shadow. This is my favorite part of the whole painting. If I want to, I can get a little even kind of green into this mix here, right? See how that is? There's a bit of a green cast. I am putting that wave in shadow. We're painting the shadow of that water. Mm. Okay, 
it's super easy to catch the highlights because we can do the splatter technique. But when you're trying to really like paint the paint the action of the motion of this wave, you've got to have value. So again, this is the altering blue, a little bird sienna, and in some places, some green. Like back here, I might have it do more in that green. This is by no means the final finish of the wave a lot of people get here and they're like oh we're done just because this looks mm -hmm. pretty darn good and it does look pretty darn good as a seafoam but you are far from done there's detailing random splash there's a lot that you've got to do if you want to just get a wave that is boom in action and well make your wall feel like you can hear the ocean like you're holding your ear to a shell so you can see how that's going this is why when i'm like even when you ruin a brush you never throw a brush away like say you blew out a brush completely and it just looked like it had been electrocuted. What a wonderful wave and bush brush. Sometimes those packs of like super cheap brushes, once you wash them and get the shedding hairs to stop shedding, make excellent foliage and, and wave tools. It's not, it's, you know, yes, I think it's important to work with good companies that make great products. Absolutely, you know I do. But what's most important is you knowing what you need out of the tool because sometimes a dollar tool is a tool that works really, really well. Like sometimes it's the mascara wands you need. And it's cool to be in a place where you can know that. Now over here, it's definitely more, um, more pronounced, the shadow on the foam mm -hmm. and what i may do is have to come in with my little brush to give me some control around my little rock here see how i'm getting that control around my little rock right i do get a little Base these out from each other a bit. So I'm going to add a little water between them. I'm just giving myself just enough room around this rock where I don't lose the little edge. I'm just using a smaller brush to give myself some forgiveness in that space. You could also tape it off or mask it off, but this is just my, oh, I'm getting there done. Rinse out for a second. Back into the detail. Back into the thick of it. If I need to change water, I will. Just get slightly cleaner water.
So what I'm doing here is I'm just making sure that we've got the beginnings of a good frothy froth. I've got my uh, two sizes of bristle brush, a large and a small, so I have nice control. Where I need it. Need a nice shadow foam here, and that is it is sea foam, but it there's a strong shadow cast by the rock. And so that's going to be really dependent on how I do my highlights for that to look correct. Mm -hmm. You don't want any pops of bright blue coming through there. That will undermine what I've got going on. All right, let's call this a step and then we're going to come back and add some more fussy bits of detail. So we have the shadowy part of our froth kind of laid out and we kind of know some of the function of our wave and now we're going to build what's going on around here. And that'll be super fun. <laughs> Are you guys loving it? I really love it. It's a good day. And I think this is going to be a really good painting. Like you're going to be really uh, loving the result of your painting. Here we go. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Okay. Oh, Annie's got to run. So have sweet dreams, Annie. We will miss you. I'm going to continue on with uh, my uh, little kind of foam color. It's a little bit still in the shades of shadow. And I'm going to use my smaller little bristle brush and I'm going to stamp out the first bits of kind of formed sea foam. So what will happen with water is when it hits, sometimes it will be individual drops, but it's also sort of still clumped together. And it creates these halos or crownings or hard to know what you might want to say it is. But I find that before I splatter, like do like a free loose splatter, it's good to paint some of this in um, thoughtfully. And then, you know, you can catch your little bit of loose splatter. So you're just creating the shapes and... And this really is an involved bit because it requires that you have, just like anything else in your painting, shadows and highlights. And so you'll have to get like, you know, your shadows in and then come back and be willing to do your highlights. And then you come in with some random splatter to kind of create that organic rawness that is the sea. Look at that. Look at how I'm dancing it around. So I tap up and down. I try to connect loosely. I'm letting the kind of hot messness of the brush be my friend. I'm trying to make sure bits of what's behind the rock are um, still showing through. I think it's going to be one of our favorite ocean pieces that we do on the channel for just 
sheer um, ocean seascape technique base. I'm not saying that I did a whole acrylic April so that I had a group of people that could paint more advanced seascape with me. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I like your seascapes. I do too. I like painting seascapes. They have a an energy and even though you could paint like this short every day, you would always have a different painting. Each wave that you painted hitting this rock or lighting, or it just would always be different. You know, um, if you remember, it was Manet painted all those, um, I like Manet, painted all the um, bales of hay. Not Monet, but Manet. I'm pretty sure it was. Hmm. It was like a bale of hay, bale of hay, bale of hay, but like different times of day and times of year. And, but I mean, at some point, it's never the same bale of hay, is it? Yeah. It's okay if you want to correct me in the comments. I'm not going to be like all crazy about it. Okay. Can you see that we're building up the structure of that splash that we're seeing around the rock? And that's a that's an involved project, right, guys? That's not a small thing to do. Trying to capture a wave that is in this much of a dynamic space. Maybe a little highlight here, kind of showing. All right. I know we did a bunch of long steps that I probably should have been breaking, <laughs> breaking up, but let's break this up because seafoam understanding it, this is sort of a new concept, so I want to break these steps down into more micro bits so that you guys can kind of... Smaller oh, steps. Oh, I do this, and I do this, and I do this, and I do this, so you can come out knowing how to do it all the way through. Hmm? Are we? I know. So, so sad. It's so sad. It's three hoot. It's three hoot. We're teaching it, right? We're teaching it. Thank you guys for being here. I so appreciate you. I'm going to put out a little more white because we're going to be getting into more of our uh, brighter colors in it. And uh, shaping that out. I'm going to stay kind of fussy with uh, this brush. I may get into the bigger brush a bit, but this is giving me some nice control, so I may hang in with it. Now I'm going to come in and add spaces that are maybe in highlight. Okay. Because much like clouds, Waves are also lights and shadows and not just white random shapes. I am still using the same technique for tapping up and down, but I'm trying to create a shape and form. You can even come in and, and pick up a little bit of highlight, you know, in the sea foam that you have in front. Mm. If you want. If you want. If you want.
some highlight in this space. What are we doing? We're what are we doing? We're shading. We're very carefully, and we haven't even gotten our detail brush out and our fluid paint. You know, you know, <laughs> it's a serious day when we study the phone. And that's what you're doing. You're studying the phone. It's not necessary to varnish, yeah? It is not required in acrylic painting. Um, for a while, it was thought it was because they tend to be dust collectors, like little Swiffers, but um, a bunch of the archivists came forward and said it was really hard to restore acrylic paintings if you varnish. Mm. So here's the thing about varnish. It is the more challenging layer of your painting. Um, it's the area where you're more likely to mess everything up that you've done, so you've just got to do it with a plan. Like, you've got to follow the instructions on the bottle. Um, varnish does help beautify your painting. It unifies the finish. It does protect it from fade and wear and improves its lifespan. Absolutely, all those things are true. Just you've got to follow the instructions, guys. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly the instructions. If you're a person who's like, I'm just going to wing it, varnish is not your friend. It, I, I'm a person who wants to wing it, but I can't be that when it comes to varnish. You cannot be the wing it person with varnish. Wish it were different. Mm -hmm. This is the bad news I have for you. <laughs> because really, seriously, it just is a very, uh, and, and also one type of varnish doesn't varnish the same way as another type of varnish. You have to be very specific even within your varnish to follow the instructions the manufacturer gives you. Hmm. Like that. So we're just starting to lift the foam and you want to find the highlights, right? Where does the wave take shape? Like a cloud. You have to think about it in the same way you might a cloud. Even coming up here, adding highlights, it's still a very involved step. Wow, there's that little foam sprinkles. You got to put it in, and we haven't even gotten the detail brush of the fluid paint out yet. These oh, are just the the fluid paint. I know. There's so many levels of serious. We're just making sure we've got a little shadow kind of under that wave. I may splash around that rock a bit. Now we've got a couple values of thoughtful foam. Mm. We're going to come back 
and we're going to add some detail with the fluid brush and our detail brush. Go right. us. Go us. Go us. Fluid paint, which you could use craft paint. Uh, craft paint is a similar similar density, similar fluidity. Uh, this is fluid gold and acrylic. I like it the best because it has the most white pigment in it for a fluid paint in the soft body space. You may have a different favorite, and you might want to use a Posca pen. Okay, you do any of those things. Anything that gets you to the result of wonderful, splashy, fantastic seafoam is absolutely okay. Is absolutely, completely, and totally okay. But let's just, I'm going to do my, uh, I think I'm going to start with my one number one monogram liner and see if it's too tiny. And if it is, then I'll deal with that. Sometimes this bit is it's just it's just a bit more just taking it to that last little space. Now we're still going to splatter, which will help um, help us get some of the more complicated work done. What I'm doing here is just creating little moments of flashy fun. So it feels very specific to the way. Little elements of details. And then, you know, I can always. kind of some unity with the with the splattering. There's so much motion in a wave. So many little elements of detail. Mm -hmm. And uh, by not relying on the random splatter to carry the whole thing. Wow. It will help it feel even more realistic. It's not that we're not going to use the random splatter to save us about five, six hours of donning. And if you're not going to splatter, you're just doing this all the way through for every drop. And that's okay. By the way, that's mm -hmm. okay. You are just speaking right now to the drops that need specific attention. I love how the edge of all that is. We do this little bit out here so that the work we do focused in here doesn't stand out like a sore thumb, even mm -hmm. though we're going to splatter the heck out of this. We want to make sure that our work is um, not uh, a focal distraction, because it can be if we do it wrong. 
and we have so much we want to do around the rocks lacing that this little effort will pay off when we do the loose splatter. So nice. Yeah, just a little bit of busy business. It's just a little bit of busy business. That's what happens with a wave, isn't it? When we did the girl with the uh, splashed hair, we had a bit of this going on. Mm -hmm. You really can't, in my opinion, get a great uh, crown of splash with just splatter. I think it requires detail, focus, and splatter mm. um, to really just. Capture that energy. I like to do this. I'm just making sure that that structure of the lacing that is there that there's some lines that show the clumped mm -hmm. water so that when we put the little random particulates out there we don't lose this you don't want to lose this that's really the good stuff that's where the good stuff is I'm just wiggling the brush around. These are like, again, this is a bit like Zen doodling. Mm -hmm. And say I can make these sort of bigger splashes to have that more connected uh, organic water line, which your particulates won't give you, which your light uh, random splatter won't won't provide for you. You only get that in the in the hand drawn out. And the water of it. Like if there's a bit of splatter that comes up here like this, I've got to hand paint it out. And then when I put the splatter splatter around it and it all blends in, that structure stays. Now, like over here, where we needed to make sure that we had that in the foam, so when we were so detailed about this that it felt like it went, we want to definitely make sure. We just add some little waves there. Mm-hmm. And that looks pretty good. And if we take a little bit of it to the sea foam in front and a little bit to the reflections on the rocks, we will benefit from that as well. Yeah. I'm 
little dots along those little rock lines. See how we're just defining some reflections? Mm -hmm. A little bit here and there. And up on the rock mm -hmm. just detailing doesn't hurt sometimes i can push my brush back and get like some nice foam that way yeah This will come around here, and you just want to mm -hmm. making sure that Every time we add another layer of thoughtfulness and detail, mm -hmm. we put more time into the project, we will get payoff for it. Oh, yeah. Little wiggly lines throughout. It just, th these are the last little bits that just bring it all together. That make it the wonderful painting that <laughs> it's going to be. Playing with the water, playing with the rocks, playing with the wet. Mm -hmm. Point. Okay, that's pretty good. Now I'm going to dry it a little bit because I'm going to need to put a bit of a resist with crumpled up uh, paper. Uh -huh. I'm going to call it a step, and then I'm going to show you how to finish it all with splatter. Okay. And. For all of y'all who are wanting to get notifica no notifications when we go live, you can, let's see here, Whoop, there we go, send a message, and the message should be the Art Sherpa, all one word, to the number 33222, and you'll get notif notified when we go live. And if you check in the link, check in the link in the description down below, you'll find uh, information about all the stuff we do. All of it's here. All of it. So, um, yeah, check that out. And okay. There she is. Do, do, do. Let's do a step and take a picture, and I'm going to crumple up the paper towel. And we'll see if we can't do a good resist. So the reason I do crumple up paper towels, I need to create kind of a mask because I don't want a solid splatter over my rocks on the front. 
And of course, there's a risk of that when I am doing splatter. So one of the things that I can do is take kind of an irregular shape and make sure that there are place, places that the splatter is not as likely to be placed on, but not hopefully prevent splatter from a place that I need it. That is the goal. I'm going to put out a little more of my fluid paint. I am going to be using my um, splattering tool. I'm going to use the directionality of my splatter. So like if I splatter and I pull back this way, it's going to cause it to go upward and I won't get it everywhere here. So I do have some control, mm. you know, over what is going on. So I kind of load up the brush, make sure it's not too clumpy anywhere. And I begin to do a slow flick. If I do a slow flick on this brush, I have quite a lot of control over what type of particles and how far out that they go. Fast flicks tend to throw it further. You see that's starting to become mm -hmm. the best sea foam ever. Okay, heavier there. If I want some down, I'm going to flick the opposite way, but very soft so that I have it at the edge there. Soft flicking for control, small particulate. Every once in a while, I may want to rinse out. And then I want to dry, but I don't want to. Um, have a lot of water in my brush because it'll make uh, splatters, long string splatters, instead of drops. Hmm. So I've got to be careful of the thickness of what I have. I'll push in with my finger. Kind of thoughtful through here. there. This went up pretty high so I can have it go up. Now I know I need to carefully carefully well it's it's a careful job. It, it seems is. like it's a super random job but it's a be careful job. But see how by doing those clumps and everything, I was able to create that structure, that lacing in the wave. And then by balancing that with bladder, mm -hmm. I'm able to get that random splash that we tend to think of. There we go. I feel like that's a pretty good... Wow, that that's pretty good. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I feel like we got the way. I feel like we got it. I feel like we got it. How do you guys feel? I think so. I think we got it. So it's that staging of foam, I think, that gets you a great result that's uh, both true to what happens in nature, but also still... Um, expressive and artistic enough to be in the wheelhouse that makes painting painting. Mm -hmm. And I think that's an, in, that's a fun balance to play with, like things being objective and factually kind of looking like what they are, but also looking like a painting, which should have some feeling of being paint. Um, that's not always true. There's a million ways to express being an artist. I'm just saying for this goal, for this moment. Sure. This goal, this moment. This goal. I'm going to go ahead and take what's left over of my fluid paint. Since I did sea foam, I will go ahead and sign uh, my painting in white, which isn't something I usually do, but will in this case. There we go. Guys, I think we fully got there. We did. Um, the deer in flowers is next so i know many of you are waiting for that don't miss that and um, she's going to be a deep involved painting too we're going to be using our 
hog brushes. We're going to be using our fur brushes. We are going to do distant flowers and close flowers, and we're going to have a blast. And uh, I put that digital together, that digital reference together. I like actually created all my favorite things and was like, eh, it needs to be this because there is no reference of that deer and that clump of flowers. And I needed something original, and so I put that together. But I think the painting will even be better than that composition. Mm -hmm. So definitely show up for that. I think you'll love your result. I really appreciate that you guys are still hanging in with me and still coming to the channel and still participating in art with me. It's really my privilege to be your art teacher. Be good to yourselves. Really, really be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.